Today we're going to start talking about the periodic table and organizing the elements. So Mendeleev and chemical periodicity. Mendeleev noticed that when the elements were arranged in order of increasing atomic mass, certain similarities in their chemical properties appeared, appeared at regular intervals. Repeating patterns are referred to as periodic. Mendeleev created a table in which elements with similar properties were grouped together, a periodic table of elements. In 1911, the English scientist Henry Moseley discovered that the elements fit into patterns where they were arranged according to atomic number rather than atomic weight. So the periodic law states that the physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. So we see here a periodicity of, of atomic numbers. To the left here, we see the element and the atomic number and the differences in the atomic number. And we see either group 1 or group 18 or group 8A has the same pattern, right? 8, 8, 18, 18, 32. They have the same pattern. Okay, so the modern periodic table. The periodic table is an arrangement of the elements in order of their atomic numbers so that the elements with similar properties fall in the same column or group. So the components of a block on the periodic table, we know the atomic number, which is symbolized by the capital letter Z, the element symbol, the name, the average atomic mass, capital letter A, and sometimes you have the electron configuration in there as well. So elements in each column have the same number of electrons in their outer energy level. Right? That's a valence electron. Okay, And to calculate the number of valence electrons, all you have to look at is the group number. And when I mean group, I mean the A group. So 1A, 2A, 3A, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8A. That tells you how many valence electrons an element has. And we'll get to that a little more when we talk about bonding. Um, vertical columns on the periodic table we know are groups or families. And horizontal rows are periods. And they have the same number of the occupied energy levels. So periods and blocks in the periodic table. The length of each period is determined by the number of electrons that can occupy the sublevels being filled in that period. The periodic table we know is divided into four, four blocks, the S, P, D, and F blocks. The name of each block is determined by the electron sublevel being filled in that block. We know S orbital has two, can hold a maximum of two electrons, P orbital 6, D orbital 10, F orbital 14. And we know that from last unit. Now, and we also know from the first, second unit, matter and change, the periodic table is broken down into three subcategories. First one is metals. Metals have high density, high melting point. Some are conductors of electricity. They have tensile strength. That means they have a resistance to be pulled apart. They're malleable, they're rolled in the sheets, ductile, made into wires, they lose electrons, and we'll talk about that more later in this unit, and some examples, potassium, sodium, francium, and chromium. Now we have nonmetals. Nonmetals are the opposite. They have lower density and melting points. They're not good conductors of heat and electricity. Most are gases. They're amorphous or earth-like. They gain electrons, and some examples are fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, argon, and neon. And the third group is metalloids. Metalloids have both properties of metals and nonmetals. Some examples we see here, we have boron, silicon, arsenic, tellurium. Talked about the stair step. And I'll redo that because that doesn't look that good. Okay, um, 
And metalloids are all solid at room temperature. They're less malleable than metals, but not as brittle as nonmetals. And they're semiconductors of electricity. And this concludes our first video on organizing the elements.